it's a really honor to present next uh, speaker. It's Jesus Bueno Pascual, uh, MBA Vice President for Europe. And uh, it's a pleasure once again to see him here. Uh, he will share some experience of, let's say, his biggest and uh, most modern basketball organization in the world, MBA. And the presentation topic is Sport Name. Welcome. Hello. Uh, I'm going to talk, but uh, you can interrupt me whenever you want. Ask me other questions. This is a working group. More than here is the MBA talking blah blah blah. This happens. That's it. Okay. So when when I had uh, the call from Vitas from Vitas to come here and talk about something about the MBA, we decided to talk about uh, sportainment. Sportainment because it's a new word that is in the world right now. And people is thinking that uh, oh, the NBA is the show business, uh, it's the entertainment with the music and, and all these things that maybe it's not only basketball anymore. They do a lot of things around basketball, and and I think it's a good uh, it's a good idea to share what we understand that is entertainment and how we present entertainment to our fans and to engage even more fans because fans are our business. Um, Three definitions that, are, that I'm reading on, on the papers and on the books and, and in the university for sport uh, Some of them are saying that it's a sports marketing business because we mix in sports and marketing to reach more fans and, and it's more marketing than sports sometimes. So where is the balance there? And this is the, one of the conversations that the people is having on the media and in the universities. The second one is uh, the one that you hear a lot from the NBA, that we say that it's where the sports meets entertainment, but it's the sports, the one that is meeting entertainment, not the other way around. We're going to talk about this later. And um, another one, it's a little bit more simple, but it's uh, written uh, in some papers as well, is the new era of the sports, it's the new era. Now the sports have to be this. It's not going to be just only in sports anymore. The sports is uh, something different, and this is the new sport uh, world, especially for the global brands. So, first of all, before we are jumping in, and I'm going to start talking about what we consider that it's a uh, sport event, I would like to put a video that it's a little bit what we are and what our sport event is. Fun, fun, fun. Um, clearly it's a new world, 
Now uh, we are in a globalization world where all the brands are all over the world. They have a internet, they have a smartphones, they have a very easy access to see whatever we want to see about the world. And global brands are using also technology and communication to connect with the fans all over the world. Um, when we, we, the NBA, are taking advantage of all of that, they try to present our product to fans. Not only to have fans, we want to have a lot of fans. And sometimes when you talk just only about basketball, you don't reach all the fans in the world because there are people that you, you can engage to basketball through music, through crazy bankers, through cheerleaders, through actors. And it's good for the business to have a good way to be presented to the fans. And if this way is the actors, the actresses, the dancers, it's a good way to say hello to the fans, come and see what we do. Um, as for we I have to, to do one step back. Before we see what is sportainment, one thing that is important for the NBA is that we don't lose what we are. We can put music on it, we can put the actresses, we can put crazy dancers, we can put cheerleaders, but we, we can never lose our core values because if not, we are going to start being what we say that we are, to, see, to, say, to be something that we don't know anymore what we are. So it's really important for us to know what we are. And we are passionate for the game. We are a basketball company. We do basketball. We do a competition. We do a playoff. We do the other stuff. But we do basketball. And the way we're going to present it is spontaneous, it's music, it's dancing. It's going to be okay. But we can never forget that we are basketball. And what are, what are the values of our basketball? The main goal is that we want to be the most respected professional sport in the world. Focus on players deep and emotions with fans. The best way you can connect with a fan is through an emotion. This is engagement. If you don't have do you don't share emotions, you're not going to engage the fans. The fans want to follow because they're engaged. They, you, keep, you provide unique experiences, you provide emotions to them. And we want to do that. And we want to be committed to that to provide these emotions and also to develop basketball worldwide. Of course, we have another value that is a social responsibility value because we are the NBA guest program and we want to give back to the community all the things that the community is giving us and the basketball fans are giving us. And this is part of what we are. And we, when we are going to talk now about how we do this, you will see that we never, never forget all these things. The last one, before talking about us. We are passion, passion for the game, passion for the competition, passion for our talent, for our players. We are passion, passionate people to all the things that are happening on the world. And we will never forget that. Values of teamwork, playing with them, helping each other, having a common goal, uh, a common goal to win a championship is also very important for us. Intensity, trying to be the best, trying to commit to the excellence the exigence with ourselves and the tribute to the history is part of what we are and we have to also give back to these people that made the NBA be what it is today. And we want also to not forget that. So now, passion of the game. How we share this passion for the game? How we engage more fans? How we position ourselves in the market? We want to, we want to share this passion and the way that we can connect these emotions with the fans that I'm talking about is basketball, the NBA, as basketball and entertainment. What that means, when we talk about exportainment, we have to think about four things, basically. Of course, there's a lot of people that will tell you a lot of things, but for us, four things are important. What is the content? What do we deliver? What do we do? What do we make? The other one is the channel, where the content is going to be provided, it's going to be through TV, social media, what kind of channels you use. And uh, the third one that you have to take into account is the consumers. Everything that you do, what you're doing, how you're going to deliver it, is for who? For our consumers, which is our fans. And how we are make this containment, I think that everybody will come together from different areas, sports, music, 
for uh, other sports that is not necessarily basketball only. How we can create these cooperatives where everybody, the basketball, the NBA becomes a hub where all the people that is related to sports wants to be, all the people where it's related to music wants to be, and all the people that is basically doing entertainment wants to come to this hub that's the NBA. So we can bring everyone together. And what well, did I see completely? But this is a sport I made. Did you see one thing that is key for us? And now I'm, I'm going to start talking about the content. We can do dancing, we can bring actors, we can bring Rihanna, Beyonce, but we never leave the world. Everyone is coming to the world, everybody is coming to basketball. We don't leave what we are. I was saying that we are passionate for the basketball, for the game, and we want to sell to the world basketball. Because this is what we are. We are not an entertainment company that is doing songs. We are not selling long uh, singles like stars. So all the stars, Justin Bieber, Mariah, Beyonce, JC, all of them are coming to the basketball world. Everyone is coming to see us. We are we not going anywhere else to see them. And this is a strong message for the, for the audience. It's a strong message for the, our fans. That all their entertainers are coming to basketball. Why? Come and see. So, NBA is where sports and entertainment meet. And this is what we like to say that we are the entertainers. A sports and basketball, a sports and entertainment meets. And this is the NBA. We don't meet in a bar. We don't meet in a theater. We don't meet, no, no. We meet a sports and entertainment in the NBA. We are the hub. It's the basketball court, it's the brand. So if uh, we want to have all these guys around our business, we don't want to go to a movie theater, we don't want to see, be seen that we are going to theater. We want them to be in our world. Again, this is very strong message. Because if we start leaving the world, where, where is where basketball is played, we are not the basketball company anymore. This is one of the core things that we want to do. Second thing for me when we're talking about the consumers. Our businesses is our fans. For whatever you do, if you don't have fans, it's not working. We can have a great TV channel, but if we don't have audience, it's not working. We can have a great arena with a great show, but if it's not full and the people is not paying the tickets to game, it's not working. It doesn't make any sense. Sponsors want to be with us because we don't have fans. If we don't have fans, we don't have sponsors. So this is our most important part of the business, the fans. We do everything for them. We want them to have good experiences. We want them to come to the world. We want them to follow the competition. If we can use Rihanna to connect more fans to show them what is our competition, it's a great idea. If we want to be with Rihanna somewhere else to see how good is music in another place, it's not that good idea. It's good to be there, the brand is there, the NBA world watching a concert in a football field, but it's not the same. So we have to be focusing on our fans to present the business the way we want to present it. Um, when sports and entertainment meet fans, um, key for us, and this is, this is a pyramid that is very well known in marketing place. I think a company wants to have this pyramid, and of course it starts from the top and go to the, to the end. But uh, we use it as well. So we're going to use entertainment to have customer awareness. Maybe you don't follow the NBA, but you follow Rihanna, and you see her on the court in, in Staples Center in LA, and you want to know because you're a Rihanna fan. Why? So at the end, it's going to give you an opportunity that the customers will know or will think, oh, this is the NBA, what is this? It shows some interest. We need to know to make a fans know about the NBA but more potential fans. The second point is the brand awareness. Then they go to the gym, they see the game, they love the game, and they start having some interest about the NBA. Wow, this is a cool brand. What is this? I want to know more. Ah, oh, there is more this. Justin Timberlake is the owner of the Memphis. Oh, wow, I didn't know that. I'm really speaking it's the owner of Philadelphia. So all these entertainers are interested in the NBA. Why? Oh, this is cool. So, okay. Now we're starting to have, to have a relationship with the fans using entertainment and sending the message, look, 
all these entertainers are going to our game. Check and see and see why. Prior consideration, that is when we have we have had a chance to talk to them, they started to think like, oh, now after knowing a little bit more about the brand, I like that. I like the idea. It's cool. They do cool stuff. Have you seen the videos? Have you seen the, two, the YouTube channel? Have you seen the the MDA.com? It's a cool stuff. And then it comes to, from the brand consideration to the brand's preference. Why they're going to see the NBA and not the NFL or the Euro in Europe? So you have to start creating this relationship to have a brand preference before a father has. So it comes to we go from awareness to show who you are to recruiting. They like it. They want to know more. They want to know more about the NBA. And then you start offering products. You want to have more experience. Come to a game, and then you start having this purchase instead. Come to a game, buy a t-shirt, buy uh, an NBA application, and follow the link through smartphones. So you're starting to have this engagement that they are going to start having a relationship with you, not through others like an entertainer that told them come and see the NBA. Now they're going to have a direct relationship with you, and you have to be ready to present them a lot of content and products to have this relationship. Then, for the purchase intention, they purchase, they buy things. They say, like, cool, I want to buy the application. I'm going to be the one that is going to have the direct uh, relationship with the NBA. And then it goes to purchase intention, purchase to customer loyalty, customer loyalty. They're learning more, they're consuming more, they follow more the NBA, they're becoming more experts. So they're becoming more avid fan. They follow the competition. It's not only one experience on the board. They want to follow the competition, they want to follow the players, they want to know where if they are going to train one player to one team to another team. Well, now we have a plan. This is the plan that is going to follow the link and feed all our business lines. It's going to consume our products, it's going to come to the game, it's going to fill up the arena, it's going to use our, it's going to follow the sponsors because the guys that are having fans of the NBA, they love to see what kind of sponsors we have. So we are creating what we want to create. More things. Uh, when I was telling you about the content and what we are, I think it's more or less, more or less clear. But I'm talking about the canvas now, the channels, how to connect with fans. We were saying that, like, okay, how we create the awareness, engagement, recruitment, engagement, and we could set up. And clearly, communication and social media and digital is the future for us. We are a leader, we are in the US, we are not in Lithuania. We're not in Russia in a way that you can go out and see our games, touch it in the NBA, see our players. So we have to create new experiences that makes you feel that you that are, that are watching the game TV, you're having the same experience as a guy from in Tampa Bay and a guy in Memphis. And the more we create experiences and we make you feel part of the NBA community, no matter where you are, we are going to create more engagement. And the sportainment is and the technology in the is helping us to create this relationship. Now we are four, over 450 million followers. You count teams, players, and the NBA, which is a huge number, and it's growing millions growing. Because we are creating this community, people that is part of the NBA, and this is it's a good tool social media because you can have a conversation with, with a fan in Chicago. And the experience, the fan experience that you have having with this fan in Chicago is exactly the same. You don't have the same experience or come, uh, talk about the game being here in Lithuania and being in the first seat, in the first row, in the core seat, in the uh, Staples Center, so Madison Square Garden. You cannot have the same experience. But social media, when people is interacted, everyone is using the same tool, in the same way, and there's no prime time. It's, it's going on 24 hours. So it's great. Talking about the, the, the challenge as well. It's not only putting rappers or singers or I don't know, actors in our crowd to create this entertainment, this is what they do. It's also about how you present yourself. And the content that you do, the video, the social media, the, uh, the website, all this content also has to be a sport -tainment. If you bring a boring tool, but you have Rihanna and you have Justin Timberlake, and you have a very boring tool to present them to the fans, 
losing the bigger battery, uh, you have to have them, but also you have to have the music, and you have to have the TV producers that they can do the delivery of the product to all the fans all over the world in, a, in, in the best way possible. Because if not, you have a good content, but you're losing the content and this emotion with the fan that we were talking with the channel, with the channel not good enough for the kind of content that you have. So we are very focused on this. The NBA, one of the biggest things that the NBA has done for the last five years is that we have created our own TV channel. We produce our own content. The highlights of the last nine days that you will see in the news in New York would be exactly the same that you would see in Russia, in South Africa, in France, or in Manila. We produce the company. It's not a camera that is going there to see the game, a Barca against uh, Seska football, and then a TV guy from Russian news, NTV, is taping it and putting it in the NTV news, and then the guy that is doing it in TV1 in Spain is putting other images. You will not see this in the NBA. We are the only one that are there. And then we provide content. Why? Because we control the content. It will be the images that we really want to show. You know, we will not see these images that are not good enough. Of course, there are some TV channels that they have the rights to take our games, the whole games, and they can put whatever they want because they have the rights. But if you're not, a, you're not a TV partner, the only content that you can get is to us. And this is important as well. As part of the entertainment and this entertainment, that you control how you want to entertain. We'll talk about TV, but the same thing uh, is in digital and all the digital platforms that we do. Everything that is there, or all the digital sites have from us, is produced by us. It's the NBA, the one that does it. Just to, to, to tell you a little bit about how we produce content, we have over 400 people just producing content every single day. So it's a big, it's a big branch of our company to provide all kinds of content. And if, for example, you are in Spain, I'm Spanish, and I want to follow what Power Solo Microsoft is doing there, and, I want, and I'm a TV channel, and because my fans in Spain will follow all the Spanish players, the TV channel will tell the NBA, and the NBA will produce TV for the Spanish players, and they will be providing to them. But they're not going to do it, we do it. And they will be the same with people like in Italian. So we provide the, channel, the, the content for all the other and also, it's entertainment in everything you do with those platforms. And the way that it's, that it's going to be played when that guy and a fan is clicking in the video has to be entertainment, has to be funny. Not only about the content, how many actors and cheerleaders and all these things, it's also the way we represent it today. Everything has to be entertainment because we wanted to see one video, but feel comfortable to see another one, and another one, and another one, because it's having fun. At the end of the day, they're having fun. If they don't have fun, we don't have a problem. And uh, where we share the passion with our fans? All this content that we are producing and we are delivering, I'm going to come back to the previous slide, where we were saying that we share the passion with the fans at the board. So whatever we do, I'm not talking now about the game, only the game that I was talking about now. I'm talking about whatever we do, and we do this worldwide. We do grassroots programming, we do three on three contests. Our platform is 3x platform. We do content media express panel for different markets. We do games overseas, our global games, we've been in Europe, we've been in China, we've been in Mexico, we've been in Brazil last year. Whatever we do is about a court or we bring a court to your country. But it's whatever we're gonna have in Italia and when we come will be something that is gonna happen in a basketball. Not only the NBA arenas, the basketball world all over the world. Because it's where our fans want to be. At the end of the day, the one that is going to follow the NBA, being a fan that is going to spend money buying our products, buying our content, will become a basketball fan. And with that problem, on basketball fans. And the basketball fans, when you do experiences in, in the streets or in some other markets, they come and see you. And uh, our partners, of course, must be there because we need sponsors as well. And when you create this relationship with the fans, partners want to join because you share the same values with them. We, we are saying that we are an entertainment company. 
But in order to get sponsors, because for example, movies, they don't have sponsors. They don't have something, and they don't have sponsors because there's no association with partners. But if you want to have sponsors, no matter how big the, the sport team you want to be, and you want to be, they have to share the values of our sport. They have to share our core values that I was saying before. They have to share this passion for the game, they have to share teamwork, they have to share, co share commitment, innovation, and all the things that I was saying before. So when you do a sport payment, and you want to present your brand to fans in a nice way, it'd be funny, you make this funny product, don't lose your core values because the sponsors will come to you because you have fans, but you have your values. Because if you lose your values, you become advertisement, pure advertisement. But there is no sponsorship. The sponsorship is something more than just pure advertisement. And it happens that the other fans, the people that are following the NBA, they are five times more likely than non NBA fans to have a product from our sponsors. It's proven. So the people that it's an event fan, they like people that support the NBA. And the results are very clear that the consumer behavior in favor of products uh, that the NBA present to the NBA fans are five, ten, six, ten times more than uh, if they were not of this country. So, as a conclusion, it's been like 35 minutes, then we're going to start having a conversation here. Um, I would say that Spotainment, which is the new era, the new world, and everyone that wants to have a basketball product or a football product wants to present like a cool brand to attract and engage fans, has to have three things that are very important. You are your content. This is what you are. If you are losing your brand to be an entertainer, you're losing your co-values, you're going to die in the long term. Because there's nothing. They're going to scratch at you, they will see there's nothing behind that. So this is what you are. And Sportainment will help you to present who you are in a cool way, but never lose what you are. Um, Second, so the goal of Sportainment. You don't have to lose the goal of doing this. It's like, oh, it's cool. Yeah, but you're doing cool, but if you don't have, you are presenting your brand in a cool way, but you don't have cool channels presented, and you don't have the cool things, you're going to lose the audience. So the goal for whatever you do, trying to be spontaneous, is to bring bigger audiences. So it's going to be a cool entertainment product and a cool entertainment content to deliver in a cool entertainment platform. If you lose some of this content, your lights, content, channel, consumers, and you put all of it together, at some point you're not going to connect with the audiences. And the third one that I think is important for you guys is that, um, but I said, we don't go anywhere. The people that is part of the entertainment industry come to see us on the board. Because you can be very good, very cool, you have a cool problem, you have a cool content, you might like do cool videos by talking about Raya concert and having Cameron in a Raya concert in a cool way. And Raya is paying the credit. We are losing the credit. We want Raya to go to the board and have fun with us on the board. And this is the message. And I think that a lot of properties, they want to present themselves to the fans like they're cool, I'm like you. I like Rihanna. I like Justin Kier, super like, I'm like you. But then they go somewhere else. So it's like, okay, but the conclusion is, live what you are, and come and be, follow me. And this is not what we are. This is the other way around. Be a fan of rap or pop songs, but also be a fan of the NBA. So, I guess, talking about sport evidence, it's, uh, it's not you to understand more as well build. And I'm happy to answer whatever curiosity or questions you have about this. Or all things about this game. Please start. Hello, Pascal. Uh, thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, just one short question about the grassroots program. Can you tell more? Yeah. Um, for example, in Europe, for our work for the NBA, we are having, we had last year 57 grassroots programs around uh, France, 
we cannot provide a real a physical experience to fans, but the fans are demanding more and more and more the NBA. Um, we can bring the teams, or we can bring a team, but just to play one week, and like the global games or the Europe Life games that you see every October. But there are demanding more experiences with the NBA. We think that grassroots is a good platform to bring good experiences. Could be more like based on entertainment experiences, could be a mix with the entertainment without part of the competition, with a promotion of six games to go to the NBA. Can be just a clinics or very basketball development forms. For example, um, in countries where actually Spain, for example, basketball is development, we don't do clinics, we don't do basketball development programs. Because it's not how to bounce the ball. People in Spain they were really and they know how to bounce the ball. They're basketball fans. So I'm not going to do this with them. Um, but we do grassroots programs. We go to the middle of the most important places in Madrid, Barcelona, Spain, Valencia. And then we bring a little show of what the NBA is. We have a three on three contest, we have a video of stuff, we have a dunk contest, we have a three point contest where the fans are participating. But we bring NBA players, we bring cheerleaders, we bring uh, race dunkers. So they feel, when they're not playing, they feel that they are in a mini NBA arena having a little bite of our show. And then we do this with today's program. In, uh, in other countries that they are asking for us to use our brand to be aspirational and to engage more kids to play basketball, we work with federations to have programs to make the kids choose basketball instead of all things. No other sports, we're happy that sports is good, it's healthy, but instead of whatever life can be presented to them. So we do like a Benjamin's program where we have skills challenges and uh, we did it in France. And that first year we have 4,000 people joining this program. And last year, after their four years working with them, we have over 30,000 people, kids playing this program with us. Where we don't, have, we don't play competitions, we don't play like the NBA Spanish 3X Championships I mean, in Spain, where the champions go to play the finals and the finals go to the NBA to see the All-Star, things like this. We have a program where we teach the kids to do to, to skills with basketball, to pass, to shoot, to pass. And, and the kids are learning basketball with the NBA because it's much more engaging, it's much more spiritual. And, and in other countries that they don't have the structure to talk to all the school in France and bring them to Paris to have the final of the skills challenge, we just do clinics in basketball programs, which is send some players, send some, some part of the uh, NBA basketball version stuff that they know about basketball. And they, they talk about the game, they teach them about it. The benefits of the game as a fun, happy stuff, and how to practice, how to, um, with the minimum structure, the minimum thing that you could have in your town, you can have a great possible experience doing all the sports. So it, it's a little bit of a very, it's, it, for me, game factors are how better is the market in terms of knowing the basketball and how structured is the market in terms of having a foundation that can help you to do a lot of things over small things. But at the end of the day, um, it's our commitment, you saw it before, to develop basketball worldwide and do it a little bit in, in a funny way. So that's why we bring the chili there and the crazy bankers. You will see that everything we do is, is, is follow the same path. And, um, and at the end of the day, they are happy that the NBA is coming to see them. And fans appreciate that. Still as entertainment in the um, presentations of NBA? It depends, of, it depends on the, of what kind of programs we do. To do a small program, like a clinic or anything like this, is very complicated because budget wise, it's just for PTE and you're not going to bring a, a, like, a, a huge singer. But uh, when we do our games, global games, that we play, for example, in, last year we played in Spain, uh, Istanbul, and uh, Manchester last, last October. In, in, at the hard time, we stayed. It was the, the how I can say, uh, the best singer, pop singer, rapper, Spanish rapper, Pop Magan, was at the hard time. It was performing at the hard time. We copied a little bit what we do at the All Star. But we tried to bring local people. It could be global as well, but we also like to bring local. Because it has a lot stronger connection.
for the last couple of hours. Uh, I'd like to ask you to talk about, about the future of uh, TV and digital. It's in direction. What's the trends and uh, let's say how many years will take uh, digital to, to get bigger than TV and what, what let's say, balance now and percentage and proportion? Um, so every global brand, local brand may be made on depend on much on TV and digital, but our local brand, uh, TV and digital is king. Is king. The, 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 the money that we make as a business property, as part of our business property, it comes basically from TV and, and digital. And it's going to come more and more and more. The more we are global brand, the more digital and TV is going to become key for us because it's the driver of our business. The business is in TV and digital. Um, and we have quite experiences in those platforms and interacting with them those platforms. We, we are talking with the TV channel. Before, they were just asking us to have rights for the TV. There's not only, no one, not only one property TV channel that now is asking us to be on TV. They want to have rights to simulcast, to be on the internet, to have a digital rights, to be in their website. They just need to be everywhere. So we're merging. Digital and TV are merging because you have YouTube, which is the, I would say that is the internet TV, because everything is in YouTube. So if you want to see a time from last night, you will have so bad that it was on the arena to tape it and to put it on the website. And then it's circulated, it's in YouTube, it's everywhere. So you have also a lot of people that are taking content that you cannot control because it's the fan, the fan that he wants to put it in his website or whatever you can control that. But he's sharing a lot of information and TV and digital and images are all over the world. And it's something that you cannot control. Um, Key for us and for every any sports property in the world is uh, is content. When I say content is video content, everyone can have a blog and talk about the NBA. You can be a journalist in the just put, you can be a journalist having a Twitter account and having followers that are following you and your opinions about the NBA. Everyone can do that, it's very cheap, it cost anything. But people will, cannot have access to all your video content. Whatever you produce, people will follow more and more and more because everybody can talk about the NBA, but only the ones who have the right to have our videos can, can show the images of the competition, which is at the end of the day of the plan, as you see. You can talk about one down, but when you're talking in your Twitter about one down from the road, the next thing that the kid will do is just go to the website to see the dunk, and you have to have it. And also, digital and TV, they all want to have all this content. Digital is asking us to have more and more TV content and more video content, and the TV is supposed to be in each other. So we're merging this market going to be soon together. I mean, even you have a TV that they have internet at home, so yeah, you can just connect and the TV application you're up and through and see everything through internet in your TV. And it's the other way around. You can have TV channels in your smartphone because you're connected to the website of the TV website. So is for us is one of the not the most the, the, after the fans, which are the most important for us, is the most important thing for, for our future. Digital and 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 we are with the technology and the communication where in the moment where we can provide really, really good experiences for fans. Now we just had a deal with a data analytic company that includes tells you the movement that player is doing in different situations of the game, so you can predict what is going to be the next move of LeBron James, because if we're losing by five, and when Miles is losing by five, then when James wants to take the ball and go to the right and kind of trade, you will see all this data. You can have all these experiences, experiences soon. At the, at the end of your arenas, you can start having these experiences, but we're going to migrate these experiences to the digital. So at the end, um, if a fan from, I was saying before, a fan from Taipei can have all these experiences, we are reducing the gap between a fan that is sitting in the first course seat in Memphis, because the guy that is sitting in the course seat in Memphis have a lot of experiences. But before, this guy from Taipei and this guy from Memphis, the guy from Memphis had all the experiences. The guy of Taipei couldn't have any experiences. 
Now we are providing both kinds of experiences to the fans. And there's only one that the hand the far from the brain cannot have. That is to be in the first concept. But the rest is exactly the same that the far from brain is. And this is also the regression of the fans. And this is also the key to the for the success of the Okay. Uh, we have some uh, big uh, presidents and uh, general direction. directors here. So uh, I'll ask uh NBA league and, and clubs and the fans loyalty program. So let's say customer loyalty program. Who has to lead the league or, or, or separately each club? How does it drive? We have a within the league we have a Timbo department, called Timbo, which is the department that is uh, coordinating and organizing everything that we do with the clubs. And they organize the game revenue policy, the ticket pricing. They, they most of, more or less do not everything for the clubs, but they assist in everything for the clubs. So in, when we have a development programs locally. I'm sorry, it's a league? Yeah, the league has. It's a league yeah. So the league does this program for the clubs. And it's how to develop um, social programs for the community programs, PR programs, uh, ticketing pricing programs, sponsorship programs. How, because um, the NBA is a little bit different than uh, any other sports property. Um, the NBA has all the commercial rights of the league and teams outside of the uh, city. So, for example, if you have a Kobe Bryant jersey and you sell the Kobe Bryant jersey at the Stephens Arena in LA, the money of this jersey is for the Lakers. If you buy the same t shirt here in Valia, the money is for the league. After 75 miles of your hometown, everything to store, to store all the commercial and lines of business are from the NBA. They have to meet all the teams. And at the end of the year, in June, because of our PL, profit and losses, and the benefits, we divide about 30. And it's the same for everyone. Doesn't matter. Kobe, you get a little percentage because his jersey was more, had a bigger sales than the uh, children's. So he's going to get a part of it, but the part that is for the league is divided by 30. So we, we work together as a business, a one business company, that is the, 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 the league company. And then when we have to promote these engagement programs, these loyalty programs, you will see that are more or less, if not the same, very similar across all the franchises. And all our PR programs, all our community programs are very similar, if not the same, within all the franchises. And also because of our CDA, our quality bargain agreement with the players, um, we, we have agreed more or less everything in our relationship with the players. So when you want to have player appearance, so the player, the girl is going to a Miami school to promote Miami Heat. And every single player has to do a number, minimum number of appearances in every single club. So they know that they have to work with the franchise to promote the league locally or globally. Also, the NBA has some rights to have some players to do these things. But the good thing with that is that they know that it's good for the business, especially because in our CBA, our collective agreement, players get 51% of whatever they make. So when we're talking about Every money that we make overseas, internationally, uh, locally, in a work of promotion, whatever we make, we do profit and losses, some of them now, but we give 51% of the income to the players. So they are part of the business, and they feel like they are part of the business. One of the big, I was, before I was joining the NBA, I was uh, the uh, director of the Spanish Federation, and also was representing the European unions. And one of the biggest experiences that I had in the NBA, we had a lockout two years ago, were the strike. Players and owners who were the strike, we were not playing, we were close to the league, blah, blah, blah. We were negotiating over how much the players were getting. They were getting 57, the league was asking 48, and then we had a league in 51. But um, the, the, the most impressive things that I've seen from them is that when we get a deal, we were fighting a lot, of course, the fight was protecting their own rights. But when we had this deal, the next day, the next day, everybody 
everybody was forgetting all the things that were happening on the table, and we're focusing on one thing. So we were one thing. Why? Because they're making 51% of the weekend. So when they're telling a player, help me to do this, it's because you're going to get 51. In Europe, when we, the clubs of leagues are asking the players to do something, they don't see the benefit of working for them. Um, and with the NBA, it's very clear that we are working for this. So when the, uh, the players have some policies about wearing a suit, or don't talk about, don't, don't, don't complain about the referees or the officials, or don't say bad things about the league, the, the league find them, or if they don't wear the dress code, they find them. And the main idea behind it is it's bad for the business. So it's bad for your teammates, it's bad for you, it's bad for all you. So they feel like they're part of the business. So for us, it's, it's easier to, to work as a one big team with clubs and players because they see the direct benefit of working with us. I want to ask more about uh, NBA. Sorry. Let me go down. I just wanted to ask uh, whoever see like an advert of sponsors on NBA jersey. Uh, why there is no one at this moment? Well, it has been a long discussion for the last two years with the owners and the NBA chief of management about if it's convenient or not, because. You have uh, different views here, so it's more romantic view, we never have anything here, we don't want to have it or that. And, and we have uh, uh, the owners, different owners, young people, more people coming from a Silicon Valley companies, tech companies, that they are a little more open to study different options. Um, clearly, one thing that I think is clear in the future, in the future but uh, is that the teams will never have a big expansion. On the English bunch, like uh, other teams in Europe has. And what uh, we were talking is to have a small gap here, and instead of the NBA here logo, maybe to have one thing here, and but that is small. This is the thing that we are talking now, but there's no decisions. And I think that it's in the future because there were a little fights, so it's going to okay, get a little bit more research, it's going to investigate. How the impact of having that. And the second question is, are the link between the same one, Adidas and all of them? Or can be one is banking company and the other one is Tomova or a tech company or a consumer electronics and with Samsung the Lakers and um, BBVA and the other And there's no common position in, in these two questions. But it seems like we are going to do something. There's a question about uh, different products that can be as a big brand. Because the <coughs> main product is this game, just basketball game. But besides that, we have MBA Cafe, we have MBA Care Center. Please talk about these products. <coughs> yeah. Um, I was talking before about providing five fans experiences. Again, the game experience. You can have it digital, you can have it better in digital, the TV, the more cameras, you feel like you have all the information about the game. But one of the biggest challenges NBA Europe has is that the, the, the people can go touch and breathe the NBA because you're not here, physically speaking. And digitally speaking, yes, and TV speaking, yes, but not physically. So we want to provide more and more space to find that they can look and feel and touch the NBA and breathe the NBA around them. Um, one of these things was, was the, the grassroots events. So all this program that I was telling you. Another thing that we did now and we are going to do the next years, and you will see soon, is that we are going to open our NBA cafes and NBA centers, like gyms and uh, you know half a cafe. Just to say it's a typical example that you will picture quickly. So we want to have NBA cafes as well. So instead of rock and pop, in these cafes. You're going to have a video world, you're, have, you're going to have big screens, you're going to have the highlights of last night, you're going to have a gossip of what's going on in the NBA. So every fan, we have every single day new content, because content is key, about the league, what happened last night, what's the best performance of last night, and, and also it's a restaurant where they can have a full experience as well. So um, if you are in an in a NBA arena, and 
I don't know how many have, how many have you seen an NBA game in the US? Have you ever been to an NBA game? One, two, three? So if you're there, of course you have the court, and everything is there. You have the gym where all the entertainment is happening, you have the TV screen, where the people can watch what's going on. But it's a very good way in the business. You have restaurants and uh, all around the arena. You have a cool restaurant, you have an okay restaurant, we have a burger, we have hot dogs, and you have a cool lounge, and they have a really nice dinner, hospitality lounge, and a lounge, and VIP sections. One of the things that we also want to provide in these cafes is that the people will feel that they are in a suite, that they be in a suite, or a hospitality suite at the NBA, so they will, the guy that is sitting in the suite is very comfortable. They can go out and see what's going on in the world. But most, sometimes there's very little inside. But they have the screens, they have a nice dinner, they have a lot of statistics and content about what's going on in the game. This piece that is happening inside the street, we can provide it in the So we want the people to feel that they are in a basketball arena, maybe not in the form of one, but they are in the street and they are having the same experience that the people are in the street. So again, it's, uh, it's, we are all the time thinking about how to provide more and more similar and basic experiences. And uh, we think that the LA Cafe will be a successful one. To give you a little bit more uh, info about this in Europe, we are going to open three MBA cafes in, in Spain in the next four years. And uh, we are having conversations with some other countries. I cannot tell you, I mean, it's not signed <laughs> where, but they're going to be all over Europe. And if we can have something in Italian, I'll let you know. Uh, but what such kind of programs, for instance, and they have like local trotters, I think, there's something here. How many in general? Um, the the side effect is the side is branding extension, which is uh, the NBA cafes and centers, which is gyms, and, 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 but it's more like branding extension experience. And if you want to talk about basketball experience through all the programs, mm -hmm. um, under the umbrella of the NBA cafes program, we have a uh, different that we accurate from the world, depending on the country, the needs, the structure, and as I'm saying before. And the MBKS is our social responsibility program that uh, is not a focus on sport payment because we don't want to present a brand that is a cool brand. We want to present a brand that is committed to the society. It's a way to give back what the fans are giving us, the love, the attention that we will receive from fans. We want to pay it back. So we have a program that um, that is taking care of uh, for communities around the world. They are going to uh, put basketball courts in Africa or in Africa, as one favela in Brazil in three minutes ago. So we want to bring basketball as a tool to make kids start their basketball instead of being in La Favela in Brazil. Today. Whatever the kids they do over there, they can play basketball. We bring coaches, we have a sports program, we have uh, clinics, but also we have uh, some sort of basketball schools. Mm, we also have NBA Fit, NBA Green, as part of this program, where NBA Fit is not that function in basketball. It's a, it's a focus in providing a physical education in terms of human sports, doing some exercise, why is NBA Fit? And NBA Green is about uh, diet and health nutrition and how to have a happy life. So we cover this in the NBA Broadcast program. This is not only about playing basketball, it's wise, it's about being healthy, it's a fun sport for the body, but also it gives you the opportunity to learn how to eat and what's good for the body because you're at the end of the day is what you breathe and what you eat, the thing that you put inside. So give you education about how to feed your own body, it also is a part of our NBA case program. We have more of the programs, but basically the, what you will see around the world is this. And just to give you a little some numbers about the commitment. We have around 232 dollars around the world, and we spend over 250 million dollars on this project. So we want to show commitment, and they want to see that. Oh.
plan the activities you're going to do and then you're looking for the money to fund them or you just have certain funds and you then plan the activities you're going to do? Good question. It's, a, it's fundamental for the business room to know if you're going to spend more than you have or not. Um, one of the big differences working in European basketball and working for the NBA, so I can talk a little bit about that. I think I've been 20 years almost, almost 20 years in basketball now. Um, is the planning. We plan a lot. We do a lot of research. We do a lot of uh, business planning, projections, assumptions. And we, we can spend money in the NBA for because it's our commitment to society. But we want to make sure in everything that we do, that it's going to be successful. What that means successful? Successful would be that the, the, the level of our brand, which is we want to see like we want to be the most respected league, so it has to be perfect, everything has to look good, cool, has to be great, and so 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 doesn't exist in the game. Either it's perfect or as perfect as you can do it, but you don't do it, because it's the promise of your brand. So that means a lot of money to do a lot of things because if you're gonna have a graduate event, uh, graduate events what I was doing in the Federation in the Federation and other properties, 15, 20,000 euros per night was a common budget. If you do it with the NBA, I can tell you that it's much more than that. It could be over 100, easy or 150. So you have to make sure that the numbers are going to be okay. Because we are a business company. Federations or other properties are more like a development company. They have no profit associated because the main purpose of this society is just to develop basketball. If they are making it, it's fine. But we're not. They have owners, they have to pay the salaries. And Cole Bryan will his contract for 30 million or 25 million, and then they have to pay the salary. So we have to make business for the company. So whatever we do, we have to show uh, business result in terms of profit, which puts a lot of pressure on, on us, especially on the sales team, because the things are not cheap to do, because it's NBA standard. So it's, you're going to spend a lot of money, so you have to bring a lot of money. And you're not going to bring the money from TV, because TV is for another thing. If you're going to have one event, you have to make sure that the money that you, that particular event will bring to the company will be more than the money you will spend in this event. If you don't bring more money, you're not going to get the sign. I'm not going to give you the sign to do it. So we're a business company. Whatever you do, it has to be a previous businessman and some predictions that the money will come and the money you will spend. The best thing to give you a budget or whatever you want to do, we have our experts, it's the event area, events area. They will give you a budget of how much it costs. Very detailed. It's going to be many pages of with little, blah, 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 blah. And then you have to bring the sponsors to that. If you don't bring the money, then it's going to pay for it. And it's small budget because at the end of the day, we are going to put a lot of people working, a lot of resources working, a lot of people that are not going to sell something to do this event. But at the end of the day, as I told you, we are a business company. We have to bring money to the owners. And if you're doing this for bringing event, you're going to get it. You're going to put a lot of people working for this and we're not bringing any money to the company. So, this is another silly way to do things because in Europe we don't do these things this way. I understand, I understand uh, what you're saying. So, let's say you want to have an event of 3 or 3 or 3K battles for NBA and 3K. 3X. 3X, I agree. 3X. Let's say you want to have it in Barcelona. So, uh, what time before the actual event you start planning that? We do every year at the uh, finals, so in last June, the senior people, the head of the region, and the head of the business lines, the uh, merchandise business, we meet all together. And during the finals, we see the finals. But until the game, I can promise you, from 7 o'clock until 7 o'clock, we have every hour meetings about this business plan. What do you want to do in the region? And you present what you want to do in the region. And before get approval, because we're going to discuss why this and not this one, because there's going to be many, maybe we're going to do all of them. Maybe we both of them are big money, but I only have 60 people working in London, which I have part of some, uh, the other supporters in Europe. And I cannot do both, because it's going to, you know, I have 30 euros, so we have to choose one. So we have to discuss that. But before we decide it there, it's going to be a previous move. Some people that is going to work on the event plan, the expenses, the incomes. So when we get there, 
We have to have a clear idea about everything we're going to do in the next year. And then we decide, more or less, because not 100% of things can be decided. We have another idea about one project that is going to change and modify some things, and we have to adjust, etc. Et but basically, in June, we have a three year plan. So we project activities for the next three years. And in October, in the body of governors, uh, we get the approval and the budget approval to do it. Just to give you a little bit of the feeling of the pressure, because this is sport, but it's a lot of business company too. Whatever you have said that you want to bring, now I have to do this, I will bring one million liters and now like this. Okay, you said that you were bring it, and they give you the sign up. Now you're committed. So the, the owners, that they have seen the budget, and they have seen how much money they will get at the end of the year to divide by 30 and pay the players the 51%. So they are believing really you. They're going to believe you. Say, so, good. Okay, so you're going to bring me one million? Okay, I'm going to pay one million more to progress on next year. You have to bring me this money because you're not going to pay. So when you're committed, you have to deliver. And if you don't deliver, then we have a problem. <laughs> because this is. Single battle of what? Keep one single game? One entertainment park. We don't. Oh, it depends on what you do. I mean, if we're talking about the, the, the game in the US, the normal game in the US, you talk about the normal game in the um, How can I say the number without telling you too much? <laughs> we have. Are pretty significant because we are uh, events entertainment entertainers, so we have to spend a lot of money in the net. And because it's how we present our brand to the fans, and it's going to be taken, it's going to be everywhere around the world. So if a team in the NBA, the NBA makes six billion dollars business, what is it? six billion dollars business, and the teams we have different budgets. Lakers could have around 250, 300, let's say, I'm not going to say this much. Uh, and other things like 80 and 110, the, the poorest things in the NBA. 25% of this, maybe 51 goes to players, maybe not this by now, but 23, 25% of whatever budget they have will go to the events of Russia. That's the so it's, it's a lot of money. More questions? Okay, if you don't have any more questions, I think we have to say many thanks to choose. I think we'll have uh, more option now to just talk face to face if you want to ask. Thank you very much. And, uh,